This week on The Cone, we're talking about cruciate ligament injuries. You might even say we're on a need to know basis. That's the only one, that's the only one. And now, the vet who treats ducks even though they have outstanding bills, Dr. Andy Rourke. All joking aside, knee injuries in dogs are serious business. Cruciate tears scare a lot of dog owners, and rightfully so. These are not injuries that dogs just bounce right back from. Here are the five things you need to know. The cranial cruciate ligament in people is called the anterior cruciate ligament, or ACL. You've probably heard of it. Athletes are terrified of having their ACL torn. This injury ends careers. It's no less serious for dogs. It, I mean, it's, okay, it's less serious because they don't have careers, but you get my point. The cruciate ligament stops the knee, or stifle in dogs, from overextending. It also plays a big role in stabilizing that joint. If the ligament tears, the joint can become unstable and very painful. The wiggling and grinding of bone also causes arthritis and scarring in the joint over time. Cruciate ligament tears often occur as a combination of a number of different factors, and that includes the normal aging of the ligament, genetics, obesity, uh, configuration and shape of the joint, and breed. Arthritis and other joint abnormalities can also put weird and irregular stress on that ligament and help contribute to its tearing. Over time, stress weakens the ligament and can cause it to tear more easily. Most commonly, ruptures come as a slow deterioration of that ligament and then a final event as opposed to everything being totally healthy and then having just this out of the blue rupture. That's really rare. The most common scenario is partial tearing of the ligament that progresses to complete tearing over time. Cruciate tears can happen to any size, age, or breed of dog, but some breeds are more likely. Here's a list of the breeds that I'm most concerned about. Genetic involvement has been shown in Newfoundland and Golden Retrievers. The symptoms you'll see with a cruciate ligament injury depend on the individual dog, how dramatic they are, and the severity of the injury. Partial tears might lead to just very mild lameness. Complete tears generally lead to them not wanting to put weight on the foot and carrying it around and just never putting their leg down. Dogs with torn cruciates will have swelling inside and around their knee joint. Your vet will try to feel that knee and see if it feels unstable. Your dog will probably not like this. That's understandable. Depending on the case and your dog, your vet might talk to you about pain control, sedation, and or x-rays to really figure out what's going on. There's a growing body of research that indicates that certain dog breeds may be more likely to have this injury if they're neutered before six months of age. The idea is that the growth plates in growing dogs may be affected if we take away those uh, hormone producing structures that are removed during a neuter. This is obviously an area of research we need to be paying attention to going forward. There are a variety of treatment options, but to be honest, none of them are super simple or things that you or your dog will really enjoy. The go-to best option for treating torn cruciate ligaments is surgery. The specific type of surgery, and there's a couple different ways to go, it really depends on your dog, on you, and on your surgeon. Small dogs can sometimes do relatively well without surgery, but they will need exercise restriction, pain medications, possibly joint supplements, and or physical therapy. Also, you should know, and I hate to tell you this, but you should know, if your dog tears his or her cruciate ligament, there is a 50% chance that he or she will tear the other one within two years. Yeah, I know, this is bad. Surgery is not cheap and it's not fun and no one wants their best friend to go through this once, much less twice. If you're thinking about pet insurance, cruciate ligament surgery is one of the things that people are most 
thrilled to have insurance for because they can get it covered. So think about if it might be right for you and your dog. The best thing is just to not have cruciate ligament injuries to deal with. And so that's what I want for you. So here's what I need from you. Please, please, please keep your dog thin. There's really nothing better than a lean dog who's gonna be less likely to have these types of injuries. Avoid the weekend warrior situation. That's when your dog is a couch potato and maybe a bit overweight and then they jump up once a week and they go wild at the park or they're chasing their friend who they rarely see or whatever. Those are scenarios where I see problems that really spring up. Get regular checkups with your veterinarian. Make sure that you can catch these problems before they get going and get lameness checked out early. This might be arthritis. It might be early cruciate injury. We might need to go and talk to the vet and figure out what's going on. Let's get that limp under control and let's make sure that if this is a cruciate ligament problem, again, I don't want it to progress. Let's catch it early and let's stop it from ever getting to the point where we're even talking about surgery. And that's our show. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you uh, got something out of this. I hope that we are going to keep your best friend happy and healthy longer. If you have any questions for me, put them in the comments. If you've been through this with your dog and you have advice to share, fire away. We're always happy to hear. We're here to help people. So, guys, thanks for your help. Thanks for watching. Let's be the people that your pets deserve. Today's episode of Cone of Shame brought to you by Pet Plan Pet Insurance.